Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. All the knowledge comes from Allah. Marifatullah is the source of all the knowledge. We come from uh, Sheikh from North Africa, Sheikh Ibn Khabib. I'm from Sheikh Al Faituri. Our tradition is the tradition of uh, the Sawuf, of the Shadilis and the Qadiris, as it was transmitted through the chains of Shuyukh of the people of North Africa. This line, line of knowledge arrived to the West with Sahaba Qadr Sufi. And we are here all gathering to share this knowledge that it has been transmitted to us. The Sawuf is the science of knowledge of Allah. Our issue is Marifatullah and nothing else. But when we say nothing else, means that everything is part of Tasawuf. For Marifatullah is the source of everything. Without Marifatullah there is no knowledge, or is lost, or is misguided. This is the source. And it's a science of the heart, for it is in the heart that you can understand Marifatullah where the brain and reason fall short, the heart can contain these affairs. And that's, this is why this knowledge is important. And we represented our suyukh. We continue to pass it on. Over the next two days, I want to speak to you about uh, two words. One is imaret and the other word is gills. So today I will start with the word imaret and the source for this is Halil Inaljik, by far the best Ottoman historian of the classical period. And um, I'm going directly to a chapter 15 entitled The Ottoman Cities, The Road Network, Urban Population, Guilds and Merchants. And while the entire chapter is very important and, and very effective, we got to select some text and read them for you. Founders of Imarets usually created them as wakaf, being drawn up before the Qadi, entered into his registered and confirmed by the Sultan. In fact, in Islamic societies, in, in Islamic society charitable institutions, were nearly always established as wakafs. This ensured the continuous existence of a public service or institution, since a wakaf is devoted in perpetuity the profits from any source to some charitable purposes without, without impairing the capital. It was a legal fiction that from the time of his endowment, only God, Allah, had propriety rights over the wakaf, so that even governments or estates should change, should change that there will be continuity in the service. And now this is very important because today, when we interpret ownership, it is always interpreted as being private or being a state owned. So we speak about private or public affairs. Policies are defined as privatization 
when they go into the hands of private individuals, or state-owned or public when they refer to matters that they are directly under the administration of the government. But in Islam, there is a third element that is absent or nearly absent in our present affairs is the property of Allah. And this is the waqaf. And the role of the waqafs in Muslim societies is immense. And as, as we will see here, it represents a completely different way of understanding ownership, where there is not only private, not public, but Allah's own. And one have argued that the role of Muslims is to restore the ownership, the legal ownership of the land to its rightful owner, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So under this principle, Muslims have undertaken over the centuries the, f the, the affair of leaving for the next generations a better world in the form of endowments or waqaf that they will in perpetuity, without the interference of any government or individual, will guarantee a service or a welfare service provided to the people. And while this society uh, entertains itself passing debt to the next generation, so the next generation will pay for the good living of the present people, our societies, our civilized societies, pass on the next generation welfare in the form of waqaf so that their life will be easier. And this is the difference between kufr and Islam. The people who will, in their lifetime, sacrifice in order to leave something for the next, for the people to come. Instead of this generation, that they live lavishly in order to leave the next generation to pay for this lavish way of living. This, of course, being at the very heart of the trap of the system that we call Riba. And this is the criminal mindset that these people have set upon us. And uh, there is no, no, no Muslim country without national debt, and uh, plus, national, plus uh, private debts and, and, and personal debts, etc. A Waqaf was a financially and administratively autonomous foundation. The endower appointed a mutawali. In large Waqaf, usually also a nazir or superintendent. The mutawali was responsible for all the matters concerning the Waqaf, taking measures for the collection and growth of its income, and using these funds to fulfill the conditions of the endowment, to pay the foundation employees, and for maintenance and repairs. The nazir was an inspector determining whether or not the conditions of endowment were, were fulfilled. And uh, one a year, the principal officers and employees of the Waqaf would meet to discuss whether they had accomplished the duties of the Waqaf as stipulated. This group could request the mutawali dismissal. The state, through its local caddy or an special appointed investor, audited the accounts of each Waqaf. The aim of these precautions was to ensure that the institution continued to fulfill its proper function. The system of Waqaf created the cultural, commercial complexes in Istanbul. Every important Ottoman city had a great mosque and a pedestrian, a market. And after the conquest, when Hagia Sophia became the great mosque of Istanbul, Mehmed the Conqueror ordered the construction of a pedestrian as part of his endowment. For its stone domes and iron doors resisted fire and, and pillage, the Bedestan was a monumental building, serving to protect not only valuable m commercial goods, but also the money and jewelry of the city's rich. So, a wadia. They had protection for the treasures. Its door doorkeepers, nice watchmen, and brokers were under government control. The stalls were built around the central pedestrian, and each one of stalls bridging out and lining both sides of the road, forming a single market occupied by members of single craft or by merchants selling the same type of goods. These markets were usually roofed 
with strong bolts, as in the market at Istanbul, or else they stayed as lanes of open stalls shaded by trees. There were 118 stalls with the storerooms in Mahmet's the Conqueror Pedestan, and 984 stalls were erected in the surrounding markets. Known today as the Kabat Market or the Grand Market of Istanbul. Just to give you an idea, it has uh, 400,000 square meters of covered market space. It's 40 hectares. Just <coughs> imagine the size. The construction of the pedestrian, where merchants could congregate and valuable goods accumulate, usually played an important role, an important part in the growth of the cities. The construction of imarids, urban sultans supported by Wakath, provided the city with public services and markets and played an important part in the growth of the city. The imarid was an old Near Eastern institution which Ottomans had adopted in the building of Bursa, Edirne, and other cities. It was a complex of institutions, mosque, madrasa, hospital, Travelers uh, Hostel, Caravanserai, water installations, roads and bridges. Founded as Wakef, and the institutions which provided revenue for the upkeep, such as the inn, the market, the Caravanserai, the bathhouse, the mill, the dye house, the slaughterhouse, and the soup kitchen. The religious and charitable institutions were usually grouped around the mosque, while the commercial establishment stood nearby or in some suitable active place. These imarets were an essential part of the plans of an Ottoman towns, giving them their own peculiar character. And until recently, they dominated the skyline of the cities and towns in Anatolia and the Balkans. It, what is important about the, uh, the Imaret, first from a point of view of city planning, is that at the heart of every city, what you had is these Imarets. There was no way a city could function as a city without these institutions, the most important of which were the mosque in the first place, and then the market. And then all the other institutions, like the hospital and the madrasa, and then the hammam, and the slaughterhouse, and the soup kitchen, and so on. These were all part of a complex, mosque and market, the imaret. Without these, there will be no city. Now, it is important to recognize that these institutions were not government owned, and these institutions, they were not private. These institutions belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were part of the principle of this ownership of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is known as the Waqaf. It is remarkable that in the present society, none of these things have survived except the mosque. So we have mosques, and the mosques have preserved the character, just following exactly the same principle as the Christians in their reform abandon all attempt to rule under religious law the social affairs of the people, and they reduce themselves to only the worship. So the only thing left for these Christian societies that remains of social context is the churches, and so the Muslims, in the Protestant version of it, which is what we have today. They reduce themselves to the mosque, and the concept of the Marit has disappeared. These mosques, now they belong to the government, and often they're maintained by the government, and with demands paid by the government, and with khutbas given by the government. So everything becomes nothing but an attempt to control from the khutbas the set mindset of the people, so that uh, 
they remain ignorant about their own religion. For it is quite clear that any attempt of teaching the people what Islamic society is will have to come to terms to these very principles of the Waqaf and these princ very principles of the Imarit. But when you look into the skyline of uh, Kuala Lumpur, you don't find the Imarit. But KLCC, a temple to capitalism, you go there and you don't find the Waqaf of the Muslims. What you find there is Western shops. Each one of them representing one monopoly. Each one of them representing the very principles that we want to eliminate. While the Muslims have to struggle in the streets to sell and buy with no conditions, in Pasamalans, in the late hours of the day. When the rain comes, they have to close. When they want to store, there is nothing for them. The shelter is given to these Western shops. And nobody, nobody says anything about it. And they don't say anything about it because they do not know. Because the model that they have attempted to bring upon their society is Islamization. The Islamization of people like Faruqi, who then poison the local people here with his principles of Islamization, that they only meant you take the Western model and you Islamize it. And people will say, but this is good. No, because behind Islamization is not what it seems. It's not a reform of the marketplaces to transform them into the Islamic model but just to find reforms, reform Islamic law in order to justify their presence. What they are looking for is which hadith they can apply in order to make KLCC Islamic. Which hadith they can apply in order to justify that you pay taxes <coughs> in order to allow this thing to happen. This is Islamization. For there is no Islamization needed for the implementation of the Sharia, for it is Islamic already. That's why when we say Islamic, gold dinar is redundant. Because the dinar is Islamic. And the mosque is Islamic. Nobody says an Islamic mosque. <coughs> Bring the institutions of Islam, and you don't need Islamization. So this is the word I want to give to you and the people who may listen to us, in Marit. This is a foundation. And when the Muslims today looked to themselves and they said, but what can we do? What can we do? How do we change society? They are given a plan that doesn't work. It doesn't work because there is no template that has any success in it. And what we want to present is a template that it represents the Islamic model. At the heart of this is the Imarit. As a principle of urban design, and urban design is the principle of trying to bring the future of the city into a more efficient way of functioning. In other words, to elevate the condition of the people and to lift them up. And this is the concern of every local government throughout the world. There is no foundations for urban design in an Islamic context that doesn't start with the Imarit. So here is a revolutionary idea that the marketplace must be a waqaf, just like the mosques. And following the tradition of the people of, the, of Medina, the Ahl of the Amal al-Medina, the Amal of the Ahl al-Medina, 
who created the first m markets as a waqf to the Muslim. And the first result of this will be the elimination of all these monopolies. And our people who are in the streets, in small tents, and they call in our cities, in little corners, you know, find some food and selling some stuff. These people should be given the palace where to trade, which is the marketplace. Mm -hmm.